is Outnumbered. I'm Kaylee McEnany here with my co-host, Emily Campagno. Also joining us, the host of the Kennedy Saves the World podcast, Kennedy, Fox News contributor Leslie Marshall, and Fox News contributor Raymond Arroyo. We begin with new details. They seem to be coming more and more surrounding the DOJ's probe into Hunter Biden's tax crimes and the alleged political interference that has hampered the investigation. Former IRS agent and whistleblower Gary Shapley is sitting down for an in-depth interview with Fox News. He claims investigators gave the president's son special treatment and the misdemeanor charges against Hunter should have been much stronger. The agent says he has no political motive and is coming forward to expose the corruption. Well, that was a really loud no from President Biden there. Uh, thou doth protest too much. We do have the photo of Hunter behind the wheel of the Corvette, the GPS coordinates from that photo. Um, but moving on past the president's no, there was a WhatsApp message that Republicans dropped yesterday on House Oversight. And here it was to someone named Gong Wen Dong, CEF China Associate Raymond. And here's what the, the message from Hunter said. I'm tired of this, Kevin. That's his code name for Dong, mm -hmm. Hunter said, I can make five million in salary from any law firm in America. Hmm. If you think it's about money, it's not. The Bidens, plural, are the best at doing exactly what the chairman wants from this partnership. Please, let's not quibble over peanuts. The uh, chairman is a guy named Yi. He is an oil tycoon in China who was tied to an intel gathering oper operation for the Chinese Communist Party. Um, we put together a timeline about this so-called murder weapon. Take a look. This is damning. <laughs> November 2018, the IRS, they opened their investigation into Hunter Biden on an offshoot inquiry. It was of a pornography platform. So October 2019, the FBI learns of the device, the laptop. Weeks later, the FBI agents confirm the device. So this is before the 2020 election. December 2019, the FBI has possession of it. And they tell the IRS they likely have evidence of tax crimes. And then get this, Leslie, October of 2020. So all of this, it's been verified by the FBI, denied to the IRS. And 51 former Intel agents, we should call them Biden campaign surrogates, say, oh, the laptop's Russian disinformation. How can you defend this timeline? Well, first of all, I can't defend Jeffrey Dahmer being compared to Hunter Biden. Sorry, <laughs> just, just can't do the that. Timeline, Mass the murder timeline. and cannibal. How is um, it Russian disinformation when, when it was confirmed by the when FBI? You talk, when you talk about a probe, I would agree with the probe, and this is what I want probed. Okay. The authenticity of the WhatsApp messages. Because one Leslie. of the WhatsApp messages, Chris Jackson was at the event, which was in 2022, which was the White House Easter, uh, Easter egg roll, and the text claims to be it's from 2017 to 2018, that's easily verifiable. We have people verified. in Silicon Valley that really, can say, gonna... verify if these WhatsApp messages are truly from who they say to who they say, when they said, because a lot of people out there are saying, this is Photoshop, this is this is No, cut we've paste. heard this argument. I'm sorry, we've heard this argument before, not verified. I, it's very simple. If it's not real, Hunter's lawyers, where are you? Mm -hmm. I mean, you could say it. Well, and the other thing is we also talk about, you talk about the timeline. One of the things I had a problem with is it shouldn't have taken this long to come up with any kind of a deal. And when people say, well, he got a sweetheart deal, you know, so let's probe. So the research I found, the IRS agents that I've spoken to, let's just look at hard figures. The year before last, 150 million Americans didn't pay their taxes and 1,300 went to jail because they didn't admit it and wouldn't enter into, into any kind of a plea. Travelers deal. better pack their patience. Chaos is already breaking out at airports nationwide, and it's set to get even worse ahead of the 4th of July weekend. Severe storms causing nearly 9,000 delays or cancellations yesterday. And we're already starting to see that flight mirror spill over into today. The three airports surrounding New York City are currently facing hundreds of disruptions, while Chicago and Denver are also experiencing setbacks of their own. Meanwhile, your favorite transportation secretary, Pete Buttigieg, who has been heavily criticized for his use of private jets, says even he has been impacted by the disruptions and that there is indeed more work for the airlines to do. We got hit with some pretty tough weather. It's affected a lot of flights. I reached my hotel room at about 2.30 in the morning last night after my flight got canceled and the next one got delayed. A lot of Americans are going through the same thing. 
Uh, what I will say is that overall, we've seen the system perform much better than it did a year ago. And I think that reflects uh, the work we've done. I think it reflects the airline stepping up. I, I want to give them credit where credit is due. But clearly, there's a long way to go. So the FAA is contributing to what we're seeing. I know there's bad weather, but there are other... Uh, we didn't have these kind of disruptions a few years ago. A million percent. Because of the understaffing, the antiquated yep. system, so much that's baked into the FAA under Buttigieg's watch that now we all have to wreak the havoc from. So well, I was, supposed to get in. I was supposed to get in at 10 o'clock last night from uh -oh. Los Angeles, and I got in at 3 a.m. Thank you Ooh, to the makeup uh -oh. artist for hiding my bags <laughs> under my eyes. You look uh, I got to bed by 4 or 5, whatever. Oh, but um, <laughs> this is how the pilot on Delta, who is a Fox viewer and fan, explained it to me yesterday. What he said was, because of the weather patterns, there were so many planes that had to be redirected over and around certain airports. Chicago... Mm -hmm. Newark, New York, for example, and it was dangerous, and that's why we had to be grounded, because I went up to him, and I said, be honest, we're being canceled, aren't we? Because then <laughs> I'd be like, hey, guys, <laughs> I'm not going to be there, right? Yeah. So, so he said, no, and he said, it's going to be delayed. And I said, whose fault is it? And he said, this is a weather issue, and he goes, I don't want to get into politics or anything, or airlines. But the weekend was the FAA. Yes, from right. the United States. We'll right. see what he was well, thinking, which United. is Del Delta CEO hasn't chimed in on that. American CEO hasn't the United chimed in CEO's on that. The United CEO the honest one and being bold on this. Uh, United <laughs> has actually more delays than Delta, American, and some of the other airlines. I and I'm, I'm clapping them on all jump. of them. So yeah, I'm, I'm pointing at Pete. with United <laughs> and only grounding flights in Chicago, Newark, and Denver, which are their hubs. I still stick with you, United. Thank you. Make me global services. <laughs> still remember. They let you take the fireball onto the plane. That's why you like them. They don't let me. Keep it out okay, of the cockpit. Okay, okay. By the way, the bikini in the, in the airport was not a good idea yesterday. A New York City drag march a few days ago gained a lot of attention after video caught several people with this message to parents in America. Stunning. Now NBC is defending the We're Coming for Your Children chant in this article, claiming that the chant has been used for years at Pride events, as if that's a defense, and that it's one of many provocative expressions used to regain control of slurs against LGBTQ people. So apparently, that makes it all okay. You know, mm -hmm. Leslie, and it's very simple. You can do what you want in your own time, but what you can't do is show nudity in front of children, show your genitals to children, uh, say that my children are your children, or pole dance around a cross and mock people of faith as we saw at Dodger Stadium. Well, actually, the First Amendment does allow people to do that, although it's offensive to it's a lot. It's human decency. It's, it's a, it's I, human I would decency. agree with you. I would agree Exposing with you. yourself to a child I, is not something... That, that's no, against that the law. that I'm not saying is yeah. First Amendment. That's I'm talking exposure. dancing Don't around me. the cross is certainly covered by the First Amendment. No, there are there are laws against uh, lewd and lascivious behavior, uh, uh, against, uh, you know, indecent being exposure. nude and, and, and indecent exposure, you know, absolutely. I want to take the media angle, if that's okay, from this, because, you know, as a former journalist, one of the things that I can't stand is when... You omit or take out of context mm. because a journalist's responsibility is to report the facts. Mm. The facts include what they said, the facts include the history of what they said, and the facts include the context in which they said it. All of it. Because if you just take that as a headline, that's shocking and scary to people that are nowhere near any gay pride parade, that don't have gay pride parades in, in, in their city or any pride events in their city. And then if NBC or any media outlet makes excuses, that's not their job either because that's not reporting the facts. So I think that, you know, across the board, you need to, like I said, you know, report what it is, the history of it, and the context. Yeah, and as, as you know, uh, the Twitter note on this said, this is not part of the history of this parade. In fact, it's a phrase that's been used in the last year or two. So yeah. bad job, NBC. We've come to expect that. America's <laughs> public school test scores are falling at a staggering rate. But New York City Mayor Eric Adams is focusing on breathing. Adams is rolling out a new plan for the city's public schools, mandatory two to five minutes of mindful breathing per day. The New York Post says the city's kids are getting homeschooled by the move, but Mayor Adams is making some bold claims about his academic agenda. Listen. Breathing calms your nervous system. It helps to center us and help us regain our sense of balance and focus. It's a valuable, low-cost tool that is proven to improve mental health and well-being. As the nation's public test scores are reaching historic new lows, 
13-year-old students posted an average of 256 out of 500 in reading and just 271 out of 500 in math. Both are down compared to last year, and that testing group included 10 schools from the New York City area. So to Raymond's point, you know, there's money for mindfulness and yoga, but the art programs have been slashed, and that's something that has absolutely paid dividends for children's security and creativity and all of the stuff that apparently the mayor does hold dear. If my husband is watching, he's going to faint because my husband is a huge mindfulness advocate. I can't get my brain to stop with which list and where <laughs> I'm going and what I'm doing. Um, and he, he's, a, he's a surgeon, and he said it, his, he would not be able to do what he does without it. And this is something that's evolved over the past few years. Mm -hmm. Studies have shown that not just children but adults that do mindfulness are better able to focus. One of the problems with our reading scores in our children is tied to so many things. One, social media, how much screen time they have, blue light, not having an hour before bedtime where there's no blue light. Two, uh, not having summer reading assignments, whether you go to public or private school. Uh, three, parents not having the time or not right. spending the time reading to their children. So that's, that's one of the elements. Yep. Um, but uh, tracking. Tracking is a huge issue. And I know this one of my children had it. I won't say which, in case they're watching. And, and when, when you do that mindfulness, I have to say, I'm only a believer because I've seen it happen in my own family. You know, it can change. So I think that... It should be everything. The money should be just redistributed, you know, and you should have art. But I do think this is something to have these kids take a moment and to focus because it helps with math and it helps with reading. Mm -hmm. And that's where our two standardized test, uh, test for yeah. colleges, for oh, law school, mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. med school. Gen Zers first started the social media trend of quiet quitting. Now they're taking things a step further on social media, of course. The latest trend called live quitting captures the real life moment that Gen Zers and millennials quit their jobs on a live stream. Some of them were comical, some were just people being vulnerable about how it would be hard to quit. You know, one person described it this way, as a content creator, sharing vulnerability is so important to me, showing up as my real authentic self. Not all of them reported <laughs> their boss. I mean, <laughs> some of them just recounted their decision to quit. Oh. Yeah. Stop reading my mind. Because all I could think, all I could think, well, first of all, I thought I must be really old because they look 12. They don't look old enough to work, you know, the, the kids that we were showing. Wet shirts but, and You know, 10 oh, years yeah. from now, right, 15, 20, they're going to be like, uh, my bad, not a good idea, because there are going to be employers and bigger, more serious yeah. jobs than perhaps the one they have now down the road that are going to look at social media. I, I tell my kids all the time, don't put anything online. Everybody's going to see it. It's there forever, and, it, and this mm. is the same way. I do think, Leslie, it's not representative of the entire generation. Right. I know a lot of Gen Zers who worked for me, um, my White House staff, they were impressive. They were smart. One ran for office. One is now a top person at uh, Snapchat. I mean, not Snapchat, another digital platform. But uh, there are some impressive Gen Zers out yep. there. Oh, no, de uh, definitely. I do think some of them were in their parents' basement. Yeah, they without a doubt. Message, uh, you know, already. That's my thing. My thing is, you know, go get a job. I love you. Don't live on my couch till you're 35. Um, it, 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 you know, you can't just like, uh, well, uh, Kennedy, I'm in the same uh, generation. And Me too. We do have people, most of us work hard, but, you know, you always have the outliers. Yes. Um, and I think there are people out there in this uh, generation that are eye-rolling going, dude, this is not a there good are. idea. <laughs> Last but not least... Ryan Seacrest has been tapped to take over as the host of Wheel of Fortune after Pat Sajak announced that he will retire next year after 41 seasons. Meanwhile, we are also learning that Sajak's longtime co-host, Vanna White, has reportedly hired a top entertainment attorney, raising questions about her future professionally. She's been on the show for more than 40 years. White was a fan favorite to take over for Sajak. And the report also says that she hasn't gotten a, quote, true pay raise in 18 years and is hoping to secure a big payday should she indeed stay with Wheel. With Vanna White, she's, look, at this point, she's a television icon. If she wants to stay, she should be allowed to stay. She's elegant, and they should have given her a shot at Pat's job. Just saying. Ooh, Leslie. Well, a woman being a, a, a guy taking a job that should have gone to a woman? Yep. Mm. <laughs> yeah, right. I think she totally should have had the offer. She certainly should have had a raise. 
you know, for 18 years, but I will turn letters for a lot less if anybody's <laughs> watching. Um, you know, I yes. can walk in heels for, you know, the half hour show that it takes. Uh, Ryan Seacrest does have a lot of hosting on his resume, but they should have at least offered her that. And not giving anyone a raise for 18 years mm. is, is terrible, but it's worse because I'm sure Pat Sajak got his raises for 18. Yeah. I read they wanted to hers. avoid the Jeopardy saga of rota yep. rotation, yeah. so who knows? Um, I, Pat Sajak will be sorely missed. Yeah. Yes. Just say I love Pat Sajak. Yep. All right, guys. That's right. Thank you to everyone for watching us.